All right, uh, today we're going to look at how to uh, replace the head gaskets on a 1987 uh, 120 horsepower Evinrude. Um, this is a, uh, a V4. And so I've actually already started uh, taking apart most of the bolts and everything, but I left everything kind of assembled here, just kind of loosely assembled so we can kind of go through all the different parts of it. Um, so the first thing that we want to do, um, obviously we want to cut the battery off, so we want to make sure that there's no uh, battery going to the motor. Um, so go ahead and turn your, your battery off or disconnect it. Um, then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the spark plug wires right here. Um, you want to make sure that you, um, when you reconnect them, that you connect the top one to the top spark plug and the bottom one to the bottom. Um, pretty self-explanatory. I twist my wires around to kind of hold them in place. That's just something that I do. All right, um, so then the, the first thing that you're going to want to do is uh, take out those spark plugs. Um, so th the best thing is to get yourself a spark plug a socket right here, and that just goes over there. You put your socket in, and uh, you can just turn those right out. Like I said, I've already loosened them, so I'm just going to go ahead and take, I'm going to go ahead and take the spark plugs out of this one. what I want to do. Okay, once we get the spark plugs out, then the next thing is we're going to come up here and take off the thermostat cover. So this is where, uh, inside of this is where you're going to find your thermostat. And uh, this will basically keep track of the temperature of the water um, running through uh, your head here. And uh, when that gets too hot, um, an alarm should hopefully go off. Um, but you got four bolts right here. Um, so we're just going to take each one of those out. And like I said, I've already loosened up these as well. Okay, now that we've got our thermostat cover off, um, what I do is I usually just take this off and I just kind of tuck this down and out of the way. I do that on both sides of the motor. So you can see here we have the other uh, cylinder. So I take that off, and uh, this is all connected, so I just kind of drop that down down into the, uh, the cover here and just get that out of the way. Um, so now with that out of the way, um, I usually leave these sensors right here. I leave those uh, connected. I, I don't typically disconnect those. Sometimes those are kind of seized in there and hard to get out anyway. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to take out the bolts all around. You have seven on each side. Um, as you can see, I've taken out most all of them. I just have well, one down here and then another one right here. Now. Now on this particular motor, it's going to be a size uh, 11 millimeter socket. Um, so you're just going to use that to take it off. Uh, occasionally, depending on how long it's been since these things have been changed out, uh, they may be seized on there or they may even be rounded out. So um, if, if they're uh, seized on there and tough to get off, then I would uh, recommend getting some kind of rust breaker fluid, uh, like a strong WD-40 or like a PB uh, type of fluid and spray that on there, let it sit on there and even do a couple coats if you need to over time. Um, if you have a rounded, a rounded off bolt, um, then I would recommend um, going with one of these. Uh, this is a, uh, it's a bolt extractor set from Irwin and this is an 11 millimeter one and you can see uh, like the, how the threads are in there. Um, what it does is it goes on top of there and it grips it and these things are the real deal. These things work. So if you have trouble getting any rounded off bolts off, go ahead and buy one of these. I'll put a link in the description, but they're about $20 on Amazon for a set. These things will save your life. All right. So uh, next thing I want to do is I just want to take off the, um, take off the bolts that go on this thing. All right. Um, so I'm just going to get some dirt off of there. All right, and like I said, I've already loosened these, so I'm just going to go ahead and just undo it by hand, just be much quicker that way. And I have this one up here. Um, if you have trouble getting these bolts off as well, another thing, if they're kind of seized on there, in addition to spraying them down with some rust breaker, you may also want to invest in or get a hold of... A, uh, an impact wrench. An impact wrench is going to be a lifesaver. It's going to kind of uh, pull that bolt off hopefully quickly for you. Alright, so there's one bolt. 
Alright, and here's the other one. Alright, so there's both of our bolts. Uh, then your, uh, your cover should be free to move. I've already taken this one off, so I've actually already taken the gasket out of there. Um, so there should be a gasket in between the head and the cylinder head over there. Um, so what you want to do is you want to take that out. And since I still have this wire attached, I'm just going to kind of set this up here. Just keep it from falling and breaking that wire. And inspect the channels around your cylinder heads there. And uh, you're going to want to clean any salt buildup, if this is a salt water engine, uh, around these channels. See, there's a little bit of cleanup that I still need to do with this. Um, these were actually much worse. Um, there was some blockages in this channel, so you want to make sure that you clean out these channels really well, because the water is going to flow around these channels and around these cylinder heads while it's operating to cool it down. And uh, if you have any blockages in there, that's going to cause an issue. Um, the other thing I would do is um, make sure that these cylinder chambers are completely free of dust and par dust and particles. And if you need to rotate the flywheel up here in and out to make the cylinders move, these things really need to be cleaned out. You want to make sure that there's no particles in there or else uh, those could scratch up the insides of those heads or cylinder walls or even pistons uh, while you're operating it. So you want to make sure that you get those nice and cleaned out. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, scrub this all up, get the salt out of it, and we're going to go ahead and put in our gasket, and then we're going to put this thing back together. Alright, so we're all cleaned up on the cylinder heads. We've, uh, we've taken a wire brush to um, the cylinder head and the cylinder and kind of gotten all the salt off. I just wanted to quickly show you what the, uh, the old gasket looked like. So there's your old gasket. As you can see, it's in pretty rough shape. So it's uh, kind of crumbling apart. No holes in it yet, but uh, we're probably not too far away from some holes. All right, and then here's your new one. It's a nice new gasket here. All right, so we're pretty much just going to replace this one with this one. Um, there are some people that suggest you put a gasket sealant on these. Um, it really depends on what type of gasket you get. Um, most gaskets come with uh, like a sealant kind of built into the gasket itself so that when the motor heats up it kind of leaks out and seals itself and that's what I have here so I'm not going to be using any type of gasket sealant um, so you really need to check with the uh, whatever kind of gasket you get to uh, see what type it is but in this particular case the sealant is made into um, the gasket here so it's not something like we have to do so really all I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and we're going to uh, just put the gasket in place just like this and then I'm going to stick the head over top of it and I'm going to uh, just bolt it in place so we're going to go ahead and get this started and be back in a second okay so I'm back here I'm getting the bolts I got two of the bolts um, just kind of loosely just hand tightened back in there and I've got another bolt here um, what I like to do is I like to take a little bit of marine grease and I like to uh, just kind of spread just a little bit on the threads here. And um, that's going to help you out later. Because if you ever have to take this thing back off, if you uh, put some grease on there and uh, bolted it back in, these are going to be much easier to get out. They're not going to seize in there with that grease on there. So I do recommend putting the grease in. Uh, also, I wanted to note that the order that you put these back in is very important. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that you put these bolts back in the proper order. You're going to consult your manual. Um, you can see here that there is a specific order uh, that these bolts need to go back in. Um, you're going to start off with the two here, um, this one, and then this one, and then kind of go in the numbered order that it has here on the layout. So that's very important. You want to go in, you want to do it in that order, and you also want to uh, make sure that you tighten these down based on the recommended uh, torque spec. And so we're going to go ahead and get this thing all buttoned back up. And then uh, after that, uh, pretty much we're going to run the motor. And uh, I would recommend running some type of uh, salt away product in it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hook up a salt away product and kind of run it through there. Because as you saw, there was still some, some kind of salt residue that I wasn't able to brush out of this thing. And so I'm going to run a good bit of that through it to clean all that out. And then uh, once we get that run through, then we should, all, we should be set. 
All right, um, so everything is back together. We've got uh, the uh, the new um, head cylinder gaskets in there. Um, spark plugs are back in. All the bolts are in. Um, the thermostat cover up at the top here is in on both sides. So um, now what we do is we go ahead and we hook this thing up and uh, we'd let it warm up and run for a little while and then after you let it run for a little while um, then you're going to let the motor cool down and then you're going to come back in and you're going to tighten these up. Um, just come back in and, and just give them another crank and make sure they're uh, tightened back up to the torque spec. Um, it's always important after you've taken these heads off uh, that you run it, let it warm up and cool down, and then come back in and tighten these all up again um, because they can loosen up a little bit after that first time that they run. So um, that is uh, pretty much it. Uh, that wraps up how to change out the head cylinder gaskets on an outboard motor.